It's not just the delectable cream filling that made a box of Twinkies sell for over $250,000 in 2012. You see, Americans were extremely grateful for Twinkies. During the 19th century, they prevented a nuclear war and saved lives. However, Twinkies' past is anything but happy. The business would encounter numerous challenges, such as declaring bankruptcy twice, dealing with employee unrest, and much more. A man and a wagon are present at the start of Twinkies' tale. James A. Dewar worked every day as a wagon driver for the Continental Baking Company. For a full 10 years, he would make deliveries while driving his wagon loaded with strawberry shortcakes. He continued working at the Continental Baking Company, rising through the ranks until he was appointed bakery plant manager. The Great Depression had just started when he received his big promotion, and in his new role, James realized they were losing out on potential sales every year. The expensive pans used to make the shortcakes at MP as the plant's machinery came to a complete halt when strawberries went out of season. He then realized they could make shortcakes throughout the year if he swapped out the strawberries for a banana cream filling. So he did precisely that, restarting the manufacturing processes and producing the new banana-filled shortcakes. Their now famous moniker was inspired by a billboard. James saw a sign for Twinkie Toe Shoes while traveling for work. He abbreviated it as Twinkies. James's new product came out at a time when families were losing everything, stores were boarded up everywhere. And soldiers were stationed in Britain as its fleet sailed across the Pacific and cannons boomed in Europe and America. America soon made its formal entry into the conflict. A list of foods that were in short supply was rationed by the government to make sure everyone got their fair share. One of the ingredients in Twinkies bananas was on the list. James gambled by foregoing a crucial component. He substituted vanilla cream for the banana cream filling. Instead, he had no other option, however, it was a risky one. Thankfully for him, it worked out. In fact, the new vanilla filling was so well received, that Twinkies never switched back to bananas when they were once again in stock. Continental set out to establish Twinkies as a staple of American culture, starting with pop culture, after surviving the Great Depression and the war. One of the first children's TV programs and possibly the most well-known of its era, Continental cleverly partnered with it. On the Howdy Duty show, Buffalo Bob, the host, encouraged kids to ask their mothers for the shortcakes Continental, which was out of this world, in addition to airing Twinkies advertisements. Before we move on to the next chapter of Twinkie's story, remember that everything in life eventually comes crashing down. The Cold War hung over the entire world in the 1960s. Between the Soviet Union and the United States, East and West, nations are split. And every day, the possibility of a nuclear conflict hangs over the average person, posing the threat of widespread destruction. During these erratic times, Americans were urged by the US government to take cover and get ready for potential nuclear attacks. In addition to stockpiling supplies and food, many people built bomb shelters in their backyards or underneath their houses. They imagined themselves trapped for an unknown period of time in a pitch-black concrete room beneath the earth. Fearful Americans started looking for food that would keep for a long time, and many of them were drawn to Twinkies because of their promise to remain fresh forever and their sweet, fluffy flavor. Twinkies were a warm, inviting golden treat in a gloomy time, so Continental increased its marketing effort for Twinkies. Starting with a new mascot sporting vintage cowboy boots, a 10-gallon hat, a handkerchief around his neck that has been hard-covered, and his faithful lasso Twinkie. The young boy had a uniquely American appearance that quickly became recognizable across the country, but Continental had bigger plans than just a new mascot. They had also made agreements with the two major publishers of comic books, Marvel and DC. A contract that ensured Twinkies were even more closely associated with American popular culture. Batman soon intervened to protect the Twinkies delivery men from the Penguin's evil plan to brainwash them. Thor was using golden Twinkie sponge cakes to divert good run the golden, and Wonder Woman was using Twinkies as bait to catch a thief. As American as apple pie, Twinkies had become. However, the man in front of them made the decision to leave. 
James M. Twinkie Dewar, the man who invented Twinkies, stepped down as vice president of Continental 42 years after the company was founded. Eight years later, Continental was producing truckloads of Twinkies and selling them at a $1 billion yearly rate. Ralston Fiorina was interested in Continental soon after, and he eventually acquired them for $475 million. Before selling it to regional bakeries for $560 million, Ralston ran Continental for a total of 11 years. After Interstate and Continental merged, the US's largest baking company, already a behemoth in the sector, became even bigger. Interstate would discover, however, that their power wouldn't be sufficient to shield them from what happened next. America's tastes drastically changed. Sugar was out, and it was all about beach bodies and trim waistlines. The sugary treat was doomed by the rising popularity of low-carb diets like Atkins and South Beach. As Americans objected to an ingredient list that was packed with calories, sugar, and unpronounceable preservatives, sales began to decline and eventually stopped altogether. Twinkies was no more six years later. In effective delivery methods, rising ingredient and pension costs, and declining sales all contributed to Interstate's filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. However, the company surprisingly came back from bankruptcy with the help of one fervent supporter. Senator Charles Schumer of New York, made a direct plea to a significant lender to save Interstate. Interstate was taken over by Ripplewood Holdings and rebranded as Hostess Brands for a price ranging from $100 million to $30 million. Twinkies had recently escaped the demise of their business, but soon they would have to do it once more. Within just three years of their creation, Hostess had already descended into the grave after rising from it. Due to increased debt and the sale of goods at prices that did not cover costs or generate a profit, Hostess Brands filed for bankruptcy. A few months later, workers across the country went on strike. For the newly revived Hostess, it was over. The business declared that it would let go of thousands of workers and liquidate properties like Twinkies and other well-known brands. Twinkies disappeared from store shelves immediately after the news spread, making headlines across the nation. Even those who had no interest in Twinkies rushed to stock up before they vanished forever. On eBay, the price of a box of Twinkies even reached $250,000. Another ardent supporter contemplated ways to save America's beloved snack as the hostess broke down. Andy Yawar, a senior partner at Apollo Global Management, recognized the value in the fond memories associated with a staple of American culture like Twinkies. He then made contact with a person who was known for bringing old brands back to life. The billionaire founder of Metropolis, Dean Metropolos. Dean agreed, and the two started to work. Fortunately, the two hostesses bankruptcy was handled perfectly by them, resulting in a 363 asset sale, in which a company sells all of its assets. It was even better for Dean and Andy because it allowed them to purchase the things they wanted, like Twinkies, while keeping less desirable items like its ineffective delivery system. The Twinkies hostess recipes and five hostess factories were purchased for $410 million by Apollo Global Management and Metropolis, the only buyers present. By promising to restock Twinkies that year, Andy and Dean were on track to bring Twinkies back from the grave. The two upgraded hostess deliveries in factories needed to start being worked on at that point. They increased the number of Twinkies products available and even increased the shelf life from 25 to 65 days. Twinkies returned to store shelves in the US along with a viral, making it the most delicious comeback in the annals of advertising, and customers flocked in to snag them. Generating $555 million in revenue. Success was delicious. After Andy and Dean successfully brought Hostess back to life, the company started producing a million Twinkies every day and made between $100 and $80 million in profit. The two then engaged in public Hostess just one year later. Nearly five times what the two had paid for it today, the company had a value of $2.3 billion. With the COVID-19 pandemic, sales of Twinkies, a well-known American icon, have risen. More people are eating at home, and they are once more turning to their favorite snacks for added solace during difficult times. 
This is the account of how a wagon driver created a snack that would allegedly remain edible forever and went on to become an American icon. Made it a typical site in shelters for bombs all over the nation. Which of the following facts in this video did you find most interesting? Please tell us in the comments. Don't forget to activate the notification bell and sign up for more content as well.